In one of the last videos, I got a comment from user, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Shaharyar Chowdhury, which said, Hey, thanks for another great video, bro. Your video quality is so high. You deserve so much subs. Anyway, do you plan on learning code in C Sharp? Is Playmaker enough to make a full optimized game? And then user Mr. J Singh left a comment asking, can we make any type of game with Playmaker? Or I mean, is it really powerful? I thought about it for a second and was getting ready to write my replies, but then it dawned on me that these questions are loaded up with all sorts of other implications, questions within questions. And so perhaps the best way to answer would be to have a sort of conversation with oneself to take a walk with yourself and look inward, a modern day walkabout of sorts. So ingest this mysterious plant extract, understand that the easiest person to lie to is yourself, and get ready to make peace with God because it's time for... So first things first, Straight up code will always outperform Playmaker FSMs. Playmaker adds an extra layer of processes that are there for the sole purpose of making game development a more visually oriented process. So it inherently has an extra step to be processed, like having someone translate messages between you and someone who speaks a different language. So you're like, hey, and the translator turns to the other person and says, hola, and then the person says to the translator, hola, and then the translator turns to you and says, hey, and then you're like, how's it going? And then the translator turns to the other person and says, como estas? And then the person says, bien, gracias. And then the translator turns to you and says, good, thanks. And then you're like, I wish this was faster. And then the translator turns to the person and coding on the other hand is more like just learning Spanish yourself and being able to talk to the person directly without a translator involved. That being said, Playmaker is extremely powerful and can do much more than what most people making games ever even want to do. So what the fuck, couldn't I have just said those couple things in the comments or shouldn't this video only be like 30 seconds long? What else is there to say? Well, I want to talk about people and how they behave. Specifically, I want to talk a little bit about getting shit done. I'm going to describe someone and then I want you to ask yourself if you know anybody like that or if you yourself have ever been like that. There's this person that wants to do a thing. It's a new thing to them. That thing takes a lot of time and effort. That thing is a lot of work. They begin working on that thing. But then the scale of that thing becomes so daunting and they realize doing the thing isn't exactly their cup of tea and they stop doing the thing very shortly after they started. Now I know plenty of people that are like that, and I've been there too. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Putting your toilet paper facing the wall is something to be ashamed of. Giving up on something you wanted to do isn't something to be ashamed of, but it sure can feel shitty. So how do you mitigate that? There's a phrase I love, I think originally coined by Tim Ferriss, which is, rig the game to win. That means stop trying to flex some crazy self-discipline muscle, and instead set things up so you don't have to show any self-restraint in the first place, to make the process rewarding and motivating along the way. I'm not saying you could take something like learning another language and set up your personal curriculum in a way where it's just this walk in the fucking park, like all you have to do is show up and somehow magically learn shit. No. For a lot of people, just getting a book on how to learn Spanish Spanish is going to be fucking boring, and it'll take them super long to get through each lesson if they even have the motivation to keep going. But those same people could live with someone to teach them Spanish a little bit every day, and in a matter of weeks, have a good working handle on things like being able to order food, introducing themselves, getting around town, inquiring about the back room, inquiring about the mysterious hatch in the ground, asking for rope, knowing how to count so they can synchronize watches, saying, whoa, slow down, and pull me back up, hurry, it sees me. Because having someone you enjoy being around, even if you're only getting 15 minute lessons from them at breakfast and dinner, is a more sustainable and tolerable task than saying you'll sit down with a workbook by yourself for an hour every night. There's a couple terms you may have heard before, high level programming and low level programming. These denote the accessibility of a given programming language, basically how similar the language is to a human language like English. So the ultimate high level programming language would be just being able to type in third person controls, you can walk and run and jump, and then instantaneously the computer makes that happen for you. The opposite end of that spectrum is binary code. That is all the way at the bottom, the lowest of low level languages, just a bunch of ones and zeros. 
The appeal of Playmaker is in this one aspect, that it's a visual scripting tool. It is high level programming. And the thing about Playmaker is that it can do everything C Sharp can do, just not by default. Playmaker's code is made up of things called actions. These actions are used and organized in the visual scripting fashion, but at their core, they are actually chunks of C Sharp script. So if there was ever something Playmaker didn't allow you to do out of the box, you could always search for an action in the Playmaker ecosystem, which is a library of actions regularly added to and updated by the creators of Playmaker and its community of users. And if the ecosystem doesn't have it, you can always create a custom action yourself. I should say though, just because you could do everything in Playmaker doesn't mean you would or should. It really just depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish. For the most part though, you can rest easy knowing Playmaker is a very viable and powerful solution. And the craziest part is how high level it is. I mean, there's seriously shit like an action called Smooth Look At, where you drag and drop it onto a thing, and there's a little box for you to drag and drop the thing you want it to look at, and then it fucking smoothly looks at the thing. So if you have some cash to spare, at this time Playmaker is 65 US dollars, and want to make games in a fashion more closely resembling human language, high level programming language, then your choice should be simple. And by the way, you should never feel like choosing one over the other would set you back if you ever change your mind. Coding in C Sharp and programming with Playmaker share many similar concepts and tools. You're still using the same terminology, which all abide by the same rules. So if one day you decide to move from Playmaker into coding C Sharp, a ton of what you learned will carry over. You would not be starting from zero. And this goes the other way as well. There are game devs that use Playmaker in addition to coding C Sharp for the same game. So go now, my child, and try something. Just go with your gut. And if you are disinterested or unmotivated to continue with it, then try the other thing. And then if you are disinterested or unmotivated to continue with that too, then go do something else.